Hello and welcome back to another Warframe video. So today I bring you my all-time favourite melee weapon in the game. And this weapon falls neatly under the category of never, never fucking used. And I want to change that because this weapon needs some love. It's so much fun to use. It's so glorious. And I am assuming that people are picking it up and then dropping it in the bin for mastery. And they are never stopping to consider its actual value as a weapon. This thing just absolutely dominates things it's so so good it has a multitude of benefits just by wielding it and i will get into all of that when i show you the builds um i have probably tested this weapon more than any other weapon in the game i'm pretty sure i spent about four hours last night just going over some builds um tweaking them testing out new ones i mean i i really tested i, I was using weird mods like um shattering impact which reduces armor on impact damage and i've I tried like a, like a mid-air combo when you knock the enemies up and you uh, you hit them up in the air and you gain bonuses off doing that. I, I tried everything. Like I really, really did try everything. I tried different Warframes on it and everything. Um, I've never spent so many mod slots on, on a weapon before. <laughs> this is, this, I have got five on this thing and it's just, it's just, well, like five different configs that I could use. And it, it just... It just uh, goes to show my love for this weapon. It's so, so good. Now, you can see on screen that I am absolutely destroying my way through a um, level 130 to 40 steel path infested survival. Um, I was waylaid by a juggernaut, which I just neatly held, I handled. And it, oh, yeah, it's this, this weapon is just mwah, it's beautiful. And I'd love to show it to you guys in more detail. So we will go to the simulacrum or simulacrum to show you the builds. Okay, so we are in the simulacrum. Now I have a ton to go over, so bear with me. I'm sorry if I ramble, but this I'm going to slobber over this weapon because mwah, it's beautiful. So the Sancti Magistar. Now this thing, just by holding it, has a ton of benefits. The first benefit, just by holding it, just by having it in your hands, you gain a 20% chance to resist any status effects. So if you're in a infested survival, um, still path, you know, you've got a, a toxin proc hitting you and you're limbo and you're going to die. Uh, there's something you can do about it. You've been hit with a nasty status effect. This thing has a 20% chance to negate that uh, on hit. So not if it's hit you, it's, it's already too late. It's already gone past that barrier. But there is a 20% chance to, to just completely negate that entirely, which is nice. The second one, the second bonus that you get from this weapon is the heavy attack. Now, when you heavy attack, you the 5% of the damage dealt is now returned to you in HP and also in a 15 meter radius around you. So if I was to heavy attack, um, I would heal my cat, myself, and my allies as long as they're close by. Um, now this thing can hit up to 600,000 red crit and that is more than enough 5% of that is more than enough to heal my inner ross from 0 to 8000 hp in in no time at all so it has no problems healing you on a heavy attack now onto the stance mods now this is a hammer weapon it does primarily impact damage which is rough uh, the only negative with this weapon is the fact that it has no useful slash procs it also sometimes will barely uh, proc your your main element that you've put on the weapon but that doesn't really matter because um, as I'll get into, I've, I've made a few builds to get around that. Now, out of the two stance mods there are, we have Crushing Ruin and we also have Shattering Storm. Now, I've tested both of these stance mods a lot and I've come to the conclusion that Crushing Ruin is slightly better for this weapon um, for me personally for two reasons. Now, I'm going to put Crushing Ruin up on, on screen so you can see it. Now, Crushing Ruin, I'm not sure if it's hard to get. I do have a few duplicates and I have no idea how I've got them. So I'm going to assume that they're not terribly hard to achieve, uh, to acquire. If you don't, Shattering Storm is completely fine. I have tested both of them and they both do really work nicely. Um, so on screen, Crushing Ruin. The two reasons why I really like this weapon mod, this weapon stance is Shattered Village. Now, Shattered Village is sort of like Cleaving Whirlwind and it also ends with a slam attack. So this this weapon has a lot of CC in it because it does a lot of impact procs. It also does a lot of knockdowns on the on the stance. Um, so you'll be doing a lot of CC with this weapon. So uh, it, it for its one and only drawback, it does make up amazingly for the amount of CC that you can put out with it. So Shattered Village is holding right click, forward and F or attack for me. Uh, I'm sorry console players, so this is what it looks like two spins 
a swipe and then a slam. So that's what it does. Now on that slam, it does 500% damage and it also does a knockdown. Um, it does 300% damage on the spins and on top of that, you can build up a ton, a ton of combo multiplier. So like three spins and you're at 12, 12 times combo multiplier, no problem. Um, you, it just does a lot of damage. It also does very, very nice CC. And on top of that, you're building combo multiplier like, like nobody's business. It does a lot of things in one. And that's why I like Crush and Ruin over Showering Storm. Now, the second reason why I like uh, Crush and Ruin is wind, Winding Temper. So just holding right click and attack. You do a spin and a slam, and that is a lot of CC on its own. It also does 400% damage with a knockdown, and uh, it hits three times. And it is very, very nice. It very, it is just very, very nice. Just imagine you're in a steel path, and you've got a bomb bar next to you. Bang. Knock him down. See you later. Go, go to sleep. Uh, that's basically what it does. Now, I've got a ton of builds to show you, and I've decided that I'm going to start with the heavy first. Now, I wouldn't build for the heavy on this weapon. I have done it. It does work, but I wouldn't because the others, the, the other builds are just way better in general. Um, however, the heavy does have merits, obviously, because of the 5% uh, heal that you get from it. Uh, you don't need life strike, which is very, very nice. So let's start with that. Also, I'll show you the base, mod, base stats for it first quickly. So we have 20% st base stats. Very, very nice on a weapon. We have a rank 4 Riven Disposition, which means if you pick up a Riven for this, I have found two so far, just been playing uh, in the last, like, month and a half. So I've just, you know, picked up a, a couple Rivens. Uh, I got rid of one, and I kept my really, really good one. We have a base critical chance of 30, which is very, very high for a melee weapon, and we have a critical multiply of 2.0, which is kind of crap, but that's whatever. It's still... It, it still kicks out a lot of damage. We have a decent range on it, 2.6. I've tried range builds. They are very, very good, especially with CC. However, uh, for the, the mods that I have on this weapon, you will see that I just kick out some serious, serious hurt with other things um, in place of range. Now, you can put range in here. That's what I'm trying to say. You can put range in here. It's very, very nice. This weapon could be built a multitude of ways because of the decent stats and decent crit chance that it has. Um, we do... Base impact damage, so you're going to be proccing a lot of impact. Um, the heavy attack is very nice with a wind up of 1.2, which is actually quite quick for a, for a weapon. Um, especially with a heavy build, you can get that down to 0 0.8. We have very, very low slash, so 19 slash, uh, you're barely going to be proccing any kind of slash. Which I don't really get because the Magistar looks kind of bladed. Uh, you can see it looks kind of like bladed, so I don't know why it does so little slash. Anyway, that's, that's me rambling. Uh... Anyway, yeah, so you're not going to be procking much slash uh, with this weapon. However, I have found ways around that, and you will get a few crits, uh, slash, slash procs out, and those slash procs can really, once you get them out and you're hitting like 400k slash procs, you know, it's beautiful. Uh, right, so that's the base. So the first one I'm going to show you is the heavy. Now, again, this is... I've got very hard to reach mods here. I also have a Riven. Um, that's the only way to make this work nicely, um, especially when you're just heavying all the time. Um, it is, you'll be healing, you know, nonstop. You basically will never die. Uh, another reason why this, another base um, benefit holding this weapon, whilst you're swinging it, um, you do have like, just you just completely ignore knockdowns. So if a Bombard's attacking you whilst mid-swing, it won't knock you down because it's like, it's got some like, um, permanence to the to the hit so you're just you're just hitting and they can't knock you down because you're in mid swing uh, which is another really really good thing about this weapon so the heavy the heavy build we have killing bloat a standard heavy attack mod 100 uh, 120% melee damage on heavy attack 60% heavy attack wind up speed which brings us to 0 0.8 we have corrupt charge for initial combo because we won't be building combo at all with this we're just going to be heavying all the time we have sacrificial steel and sacrificial pressure uh, these are quite hard and very expensive to get so you can swap these out for pressure point prime pressure point or, or true true steel i have 250% crit with this i have vol dual stat voltaic and um uh, dual stat will take strike which is electricity and stash stash chance uh, brings us to 32 and the icing on the cake is my riven so the riven does 200% crit chance and 200% melee damage obviously that's buffed up very very nicely with riven, dis riven disposition 4 now this weapon does not need a riven i have one it's very nice i actually sometimes don't use a riven uh, but the riven is very very nice um because obviously the d disposition is just god tier so yeah let's uh let's see what this thing can do 
spawn up my enemies. So I have lava on Inneros. Uh, oh, I didn't mention the fact that I have no outside sources of damage. So I have no crit cat. I have no uh, arcanes on this weapon. I have no extra added buffs. The only one that I have added is still charge from Inneros, which is giving me 60% extra melee damage. Uh, the only reason I've allowed this is because still charge is a very common aura and a lot of new players use it because it gives a lot of uh, base melee damage obviously and is a very easy to come by aura mod so that's the only reason it's on there um, because I've allowed it and that's basically it there's no extra outside damage so what you're seeing is basically what you're getting with the Magistar so the heavy attacks so let's uh, bun bundle them all together with Inneros heavy attack up instant red crits I've already killed one killed a couple it's okay. It does okay damage. You know, I'm hitting very big numbers. These guys have very, very high, high HP pools. And yeah, I'm hitting 79, 80k red crits with the heavy attack. And obviously I'm healing every time I hit. And that is the heavy. It is very, very disgusting. Um, like I said, the other builds are actually better for this. So I wouldn't go a heavy build. However, you can. I have tested it. It is, it is uh, completely fine to, to do so. Now... Onto the main builds, I have a pure status mod, uh, a status build on here. The only crit I have on here is Blood Rush because Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds are absolutely core cool on this weapon. Uh, no matter what I tested, Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds always came through as the best mods that I could possibly put on this weapon. So Blood Rush without any extra crit or any extra damage or added, I get, I always get red crits no matter what. So around 11, 12 times multiplier, I'm always going to be hitting that huge huge red crits and weeping wounds is always going to bring me above 100 percent stats uh, which means i'm going to be more more likely to proc slash um this is a status build so i have berserker on here for attack speed um which is also proccing uh proccing off my crits which is blood rush which is nice they couple together i also have condition overload obviously as a status build i have a uh, pressure point on here so no sacrificial pressure and also crit because there's no need um I have Shocking Touch, Molten Impact, Single Stat Elements. I have Prime Fever Strike, another single stack, which is giving me Corrosive and Heat. So I'm gaining seven, uh, 637 Heat and 1,699 Corrosive Damage on top of Slash, Puncture and Impact, which is very, very nice. I'm also going to be hitting Forced Impact, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. It's also just really nice CC. I wish it was any other status, but unfortunately you know impact it is and that's another reason why i don't use the heavy because it does no no innate slash um a lot of heavy he uh, heavy built weapons like just building for the heavy attack use um slash or another single stat uh, to go over this but, but any the heavy attacks on crushing Root and also shattering storm they both hit impact on the on the heavies and there's nothing you can do to avoid that so um so the reason why heavy attack builds on slash weapons are so good is because obviously you're hitting like ridiculous numbers with a slash proc involved there too so that's why i say wouldn't i wouldn't build for a heavy attack on this anyway so condition overload all this this is basically standard build except for blood rush but because they're core on this you know you can seriously kick out a lot of damage so let's see what this does once again we can just uh group them all together i'm just gonna slice into them I'm instantly at reds in like two seconds flat. And they're all dead in like two seconds flat. If I just do it without lava, you know, I'm hitting lovely red crits. They're not huge, but I'm also proccing decent stats on there. Um, and I'm deleting these level 150 corrupted heavy gunners, which are arguably the tankiest unit in the game. And yeah, that was a slash proc, and he's dead. Um, that's the that's the condition overload build. That's a status build again, completely viable. I've made these all viable um, for what they are, and they are absolutely disgusting. And yeah, all right. So we're gonna go into the build that I would use as its final form. Now I spent ages and ages on this, and I've come up with this. So as I was saying, weeping wounds and blood rush are absolutely core. You need these. Um, you don't need sacrificial pressure. You don't need a riven. You don't need sacrificial steel because you don't need any extra crit to get to red. I don't see the point in going anything beyond red, but you can. You can with these two. Uh, you can go beyond red. I think it's like 400% crit chance, which is ridiculous. But you don't need it. You absolutely don't need it. Instead, I've got condition overload on here. I have a dual stat for corrosive. Um, I also have prime fever strike for extra corrosive because I'm trying to proc more corrosive than impact. However, I do get forced. Uh, impacts uh, with the stance. I have Molten Impact for some heat because heat is very, very nice. Also, I'm going to be proccing that 
a bit more often than impact if I'm going to be hitting without the uh, the force procs from the stance mod. I have organ shatter on here, which gives me 3.8 critical multiplier, coupled with the red crits. That is ridiculous, and that is the build. Now, the one thing missing from this build is attack speed. It has no innate attack speed. That's because I needed to sacrifice the attack speed to either gain heat and or gain extra crit. Now, I figured after a bit more testing, I swapped out heat. I tried crit and I found that heat probably is a bit bad because of condition overload. I'm getting an extra status. I'm, I'm actually dealing more damage and I don't need that extra crit. Um, but however, you can also swap out uh, heat for... Um, the Riven, but this is a no Riven. I wanted to do no Riven, so this is what I've come up with. Uh, you'll see this thing does some serious, serious damage. So as I was saying, you can build up a combo multiply pretty much instantly. Let's bundle them all together. Let's do Shattering Village. Let's get in there. Now I have no attack speed on here, and that's, you know, a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. But by the time I'm near 10-11, in a few hits, these, these tanky old enemies are just completely dead. So with the final form being that there is no attack speed in here to add extra damage. Um, the one thing that I will say about it is you need to get an outside source of attack speed. So anything will do. You know, war, uh, war cry on Valk Valk Valkyrie, Valkyrie, um, Volt, Volt attack speed. Any, any attack speed that you can give yourself other than the actual weapon itself, um, you'll put out the most damage with this thing. So in this case, I have Inneros with War Cry on. Um, I've not built him particularly very strong. He's still got 7k health. He's still tanky, but the added War Cry gives me extra attack speed. So if I go over there now and test this out. Let's do War Cry. Very nice attack speed. And when I start building that um, combo multiplier up, I'm going to be hitting some serious, serious numbers. Let's go over there. So, see that slam knocked down? Very, very nice. You know, I'm hitting... I'm now at the red crit phase. I'm just... One over... The, like, the base attack here like this. 204k impact. <laughs> like... Yeah. It's just... Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And I fell off. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, so this thing, it can seriously kick out a punch. And I want to give it some love. I really, really do. Um, a lot of people are using the same weapons. That was 80k. I'm actually nerding out. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just looking at the numbers. Yeah, this thing does some serious damage, and I really, really love it. And I need it. I want people to to show it some love because it does some serious, serious damage. Now, the same thing with the Riven. So, like I said uh, when I was talking about this earlier, I have swapped out. The only thing I actually have swapped out is the heat. So I got rid of heat, and instead of heat, I put in our Riven because the Riven gives us um, extra crit. So we can get, we're nearly 100 anyway with Blood Rush. Um, that's just going to be through the roof. Um, on top of that, we also have Condition Overload because Weeping Wounds allows us to get uh, to proc all of our status uh, all at once. And that's really glorious critical damage to buff up that crit. And that's basically our Riven build. Now this is, a, this is the build that I was using in the beginning of the video when I was attacking the uh, Infested. And you can see that for yourself that I'm hitting some serious numbers. Um, and that's basically the Magistar. Um, there's not much to say about it. Like I said, there was a ton, a ton of ways to build this. Um, for instance, final form, you can swap out Organ Shower for Gladiator Might. It's slightly less critical damage, but it also adds plus 10% crit chance per combo multiplier. So if you slap that in there, it's still the same thing. Um, or it gives me 20% because I've got a, a, uh, a Gladiator mod on my Inneros. So that's 20% crit critical chance per combo multiplier which is added to Blood Rush. Again, you know, it's disgusting, but I, I just prefer the added critical, critical damage. And that's basically the weapon. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really want to see this weapon get some love because holy damn, I have not explained anything well at all. And I just want people to use it because you can seriously hear out some big, 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 big numbers. Um, anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe if you like me rambling. Um, I will continue to do so and I will thank you for watching and I will see you later. Peace.